Hello and welcome to a conversation when one of the great spiritual icons of our times is celebrated as the inheritor of Mahatma Gandhi, embodies the highest aspirations of the Buddhist faith and fact of spirituality from all traditions. He's cultivated the meeting ground between science and faith, between religions, between the evolution of the human condition, its crises, its predicaments. He has reached out and touched hearts and minds of millions of people across the world. I'm deeply honored, blessed and privileged to welcome His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Your Holiness, as we record this program, it's uh, the 50 years uh, since you arrived into exile in India uh, because of uh, the imperatives of Chinese military presence in Tibet. You have uh, frequently described India uh, as the guru to the Tibetan Chela. It's a very special relationship. Uh, on this commemoration, I was sort of going to say celebration, because at one level we in India celebrate you and we celebrate the Tibetans, uh, but it's also, it marks a very sad moment in Tibetan history. Uh, but your presence in India, what are your feelings, what are your emotions uh, at this landmark? Of course, for a great master there are no landmarks and every day is an unfolding present. But what are your feelings towards India and this moment? Of course, uh, I think uh, uh, from the Buddhist university, uh, concept Patit interdependency. So one event there are a lot of different sort of what's it, aspects. Uh, so last fifty years in a way we lost our own country and particularly last fifty years inside Tibet there are a lot of ups and downs and most cases, uh, a very, very suppressive sort of experience. Uh, so, uh, very sad. But one way, uh, we homeless person found new happy home with complete freedom uh, where you can, as I say, the, utilize human creativity nature and get these new ideas, new things, a new concept. Uh, after all, India, I think uh, they, I think the country through centuries, many different ideas, different concepts develop in this country. So uh, I also, you see, get, I think, some uh, sort of was it a some benefit from that tradition and then basically we are Buddhist when we are in physically when we are in Tibet we always you see, mentally you see we look India is our spiritual home so I always you see uh, sincerely you see, describing India uh, Indians our guru we are Chela so some Tibetan uh, masters you see, express Tibet land of snow naturally snow white uh, but till light of India reach Tibet Tibet still remain dark it is true so therefore uh, from that aspect we are very happy and and now actually in practical level mm -hmm. now most part of my life mm -hmm. and best part of my life mm -hmm. spent in this country mm -hmm. as a refugee mm -hmm. or in other words mm -hmm. the longest guest of Indian government <laughs> <laughs> and the people of India <laughs> <laughs> that's right of course of course yeah. so so some kind of I think from some aspect very happy uh, last 50 years from some aspect, of course, 
some sad feeling like that. But basically, that's the uh, very nature of samsaric life. <laughs> uh, you know, this is sort of Thank You India Day. Uh, that uh, we're commemorating uh, on March the 31st. It was the day that you uh, entered uh, India. What are some of the things, more concrete things, that you thank India for? I think, firstly, uh, since, of course, Pantan Nehru, I think in 1954 in Peking, uh, the first meeting took place in Peking. Of course, very short period, uh, but it's a little sort of strange experience. But in any way, uh, then 56, I had a uh, number of occasions meeting with Pandit Nehru and many other Indian leaders, and uh, quite a number of Mahatma Gandhi, so to say, Gandhian uh, freedom fighter. Uh, so I think because quite a number of leaders then quite what's it, well known each I mean quite, quite sort of known each other well uh, so then after come here Pantan Nehru I think lay down certain policy regarding to the Jewish community but, and in the field of education he personally took special interest so last 50 years, I think uh, now today we really seeing or enjoying the significant positive result of this policy. So we are very, very happy. And of course, there's a Tibetan settlement in different parts of India, many states. The generally relation between Indian community, or local people, and Tibetan, of course, occasionally some problems here and there. That's quite natural. Even Dharamsala also sometimes <laughs> see some, some problems. But basically, very good relation. So, so we always feel uh, government of India and various concerned state government and also concerned people generally, and including Indian media, you see, very, very sort of uh, supportive. So, so we, uh, we really feel we found best place where we take refugee. And then, I think more than hundred nations on this planet. I think about India. I think the maximum help to the refugee community. So we always feel grateful. In what ways has uh, India changed uh, from the time that you came in as a refugee? And I ask this question in, in two contexts. Uh, one is a spiritual context that the Tibetan heritage of mind training and techniques and practices were evolved in a monastic environment. And the external reality of those teachings now are very different. Uh, the people's contacts, contexts, their experiences, the lives they lead are very different. So in, 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 in what ways has the teaching needed to adapt itself to the external environment? Yes, of course. Uh, to some extent, you see, environment also, I think, a very uh, crucial factor for impact in our mind in our inner world. However, I think the modernity, I think, means some external sort of change of matter in, in matter field. But as far as inner world, uh, emotional world is concerned, I think today's world and at the time when Buddha mm -hmm. and some other Indian masters, you see, come, I think more or less same. Uh, but sometimes I think some some of negative emotion mm -hmm. even may be stronger now today. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the actually the uh, 
I think all spiritual sort of teaching basically aiming our uh, emotion, try to minimize negative emotion, destructive emotion, uh, such as anger, hatred, uh, and through that way violence. Mm -hmm. Then they uh, try to promote or strengthening the positive emotions such as compassion, mm -hmm. forgiveness, these things. So all traditions are actually you see, aiming on that, same. Mm -hmm. Then Buddhists, uh, like one of the uh, important non-theistic religions, mm -hmm. so the way to tackle mm -hmm. our emotion mm -hmm. in a world uh, through our knowledge or through our wisdom. Uh, so usually I describe the Buddhist way of, you see, training our mind is to utilize human intelligence maximum way through reasoning, through logical approach, then transform our emotion. So of course, if you know the real technique of Buddhism, particularly the elaborated by Nalanda masters such as Nagarjuna and the Chandrakirti and uh, uh, Shantadeva like that, Lord Jesus master. In a way, it also kind of, what I don't know the exact sort of meaning, mm -hmm. but usually you see, I feel something like humanism, some kind of humanism, mm -hmm. that means not talking about this is some mysterious level, mm -hmm. but today's mm -hmm. day to days are sort of emotional mm -hmm. thing. Buddhism, you see, mainly you see dealing with that uh, through daily experiences. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, in modern modern time uh, environment, mm -hmm. of course, big different than Tibet, mm -hmm. but still in terms of the world, more or less same. Mm -hmm. This is my view. In terms of this uh, evolution, one of the remarkable things about you, Your Holiness, that uh, you're into your 70s, uh, you still engage in several hours of uh, personal practice. Mm. Uh, you still receive teachings and initiations from other Buddhist masters. Mm. Uh, yours is a continuing evolution, a continuing journey. Uh, many spiritual teachers uh, you know, have a tendency uh, to claim a peak experience you know, like under the Bodhi tree, the Buddha or someone got mm. some great uh, insight and then the teaching follows. In these 50 years, in what ways do you feel you have changed? No, oh, not much <laughs> change. <laughs> Although, uh, I, I have keen sort of interest, uh, keen sort of serious sort of concern about my own spiritual development. But in some way, in a certain, I think, intellectual le level thinking. I think uh, last uh, 50 years and say the uh, 1960s and 70s, I think I developed a certain sort of deeper understanding. Uh, but then you see these intellectual sort of level understanding or awareness also is in need single pointed mind. Uh, that that case, uh, my sort of capacity is zero. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, you see, no time for spent you see, hours, hours for training that. And secondly, my laziness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure that uh, that that, that uh, the, you know much of the world would agree with you. For once, if I may disagree, <laughs> and, and and find the courage to say that. Uh, but because Your Holiness, you, uh, despite the enormous difficulties and challenges uh, in your life, uh, you know, both the fact of living in exile, uh, what would normally be perceived as constant uh, you know, humiliations every day, that you know you plan to go to a certain country because of pressure, uh, visa scans, there's, there's, there's so much disappointment, uh, anguish, you know, the, the, the brutality in the Tibetan people, so many areas of mm. what would normally destroy an, an average human being such as myself, yet you manage to radiate so much joy and laughter and energy. So what is that, what is that secret? What is that philosophy? What is that state of mind that would help, you know, common persons such as myself uh, and, and, and our viewers even move in that direction? 
as I mentioned at the beginning, the look to any sort of event uh, from wider perspective, then I think the negative emotion, destructive emotion, or disturb, disturbing sort of emotion, usually, you see, they have some kind of target, independent, absolute. The, there, when you carry more holistic sort of or say the view, or more more totality, more, more total totality, what what call totality, or no, uh, or a concept of interdependency. Then uh, you can see that this event not take place because of one sort of cause but many other causes uh, and previously and also at present at the same time you see, due to this fact this happened due to that this happened like that so that view that concept really they destroyed the independent absolute target so then the negative emotion you see, cannot find target that's i think one uh, uh, for according to my own experience, and also some of my uh, friend, spiritual friend, also they have the same sort of experience. Immense help when you see there's some positive things happen or negative things happen. Look from wider perspective, then uh, you see you can't find something to blame or something too much attached. So that is really helpful to maintain or sustain calm mind more balance like what is it, the, uh, some uh, tranquilizer or something like that, something like that. You see the, our mind usually some positive things happen too much sort of excited some negative things happen too much sort of uh, sad or something like that so the uh, tranquilizer uh, uh, like you see the uh, more the more balance so that's very very helpful and then, then also, you see, when one event, now, for example, we lost our own country, a lot of sort of uh, sufferings there. But, you see, uh, I always is telling people and also feel, if still I am I'm in Patala, uh, the holy place and the holy Dalai Lama, <laughs> then I may not be like today, sort of my thinking, way of thinking more practical, more sort of realistic. You know, sometimes you, see, uh, you remain on high throne and like that, then, then you, see, you have your own sort of world. <laughs> sometimes it's a little distance from the reality. Uh, and then naturally, you see, because refugee, uh, I have many, many opportunity to meet different people uh, each meeting I get some sort of new experience or new learning and particularly different uh, the follower of different tradition and also including many scientists like that uh, so one way lost our own country but meantime that same sort of event also brought a lot of sort of positive thing then mentally more balance like that so, uh, so every event, uh, negative, if you look from another angle, you may find some positive things. So that also one way is it to make more balance our emotion. So while you have uh, attained uh, more than just balance, you have attained, you know, uh, I think uh, millions of people recognize you and, and, and regard you as uh, a living embodiment of the Buddha and many aspects of you know the Buddha of compassion, but yet would you say that in what ways has the reality of from fifty years ago today uh, really changed, and do you feel that the the reality has changed for the better uh, for the cause that you embody is today 's reality more favorable uh, do, do hmm. things look more positive and optimistic? Uh, 50 years into exile for the cause that you stand for? 
my main now uh, since some time back I think more than 40, 40 years uh, as a result of new experience and also seeing a different event on this global sort of uh, event uh, and I develop more sort of conviction as firstly as a human being I am one of the six billion human beings. So individual human beings' future depend on the rest of the humanity. It's clear. We are social animals. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, second, as a religious person, Buddhist monk. So seeing, you see, many conflict in the name of religion. Then, uh, because of these sort of uh, experience or learning, I develop firm conviction as a human being, one of, uh, as one individual small contribution, try to make clear our human brothers and sisters the ultimately source of inner strength, source of peace, it's not on money, not on power, but not, not only on our intelligence or knowledge, but warm-heartedness. There's nothing to do with religion. Even now, modern scientists, they say, more compassionate person, you get more peace of mind. That immense benefit of our health and a happier human family. So, uh, my commitment to promotion of human value, that means mainly promotion of warm-heartedness. Uh, that's my number one commitment. Number two commitment, as a Buddhist, as a religious person, the in spite different philosophy, different tradition, and also despite a lot of bad experience in the past, sometimes it's a holy war, <laughs> killing each other, but in spite of that, now today's reality, you see, firstly, we have to live together, whether we like it or not. World becoming smaller, smaller, heavily interdependent. And with that, we have to live together. And then same time, the all all major religious tradition, in spite of different philosophy, you see, all carry the same sort of uh, say the practice or message, message of love, compassion, forgiveness, like that. Uh, so there is a real sort of basis for promotion of genuine harmony. So these two fields, uh, I think uh, I made some contribution for promotion of these two things. So still, till my death, till my last breathing, I fully committed. So now more and more uh, sort of good human being, including many scientists, uh, are really uh, supporting or share, sharing it's the same view and making some effort from their own different fields, different professional way. Very good, wonderful, and encouraging. And then also the religious harmony. Now many uh, spiritual brothers and sisters now really making effort for promotion of religious harmony. So, uh, so now I have sometimes I feel I have a lot of comrades <laughs> in these two fields. Uh, so I am just one of them. Uh, so judging from that, this body uh, now. Uh, 74 years nearly, I feel some usefulness, uh, well-being of other, or well-being of this planet. And also, of course, when I come to uh, uh, India as a refugee, and I have no idea about the importance of environment, now gradually learning from specialists, those experts, then I really realized now world is our home. This small planet is our only home. And meantime, population growing. Uh, so therefore, special care about environment is one of the top important our responsibility. So in that field, I also you see always make uh, awareness. Uh, more, sort of more, more public, public level. I always do. So I feel 
of course, the Tibetan struggle, difficult, a lot of problem, a lot of anxiety, a lot feeling of helplessness. But at the same time, uh, also you see uh, uh, certain things which I feel, oh, uh, my life made some contribution, some usefulness, some, some, some contribution. So my life become uh, quite, quite okay. Uh, Your Holiness, most people's experience, uh, you know, who are on, on the everyday mundane existence, is that there is more violence today. Uh, that uh, the experience of uh, non-violence uh, as, a, as a strategy is seen as an impractical ideal, sort of intellectually attractive, but not seen as a practical uh, strategy. We're looking at an economic recession which has been driven by greed. So we're actually seeing that uh, the, the degradation of human values, more uh, afflictive emotions than less. And uh, it's, so it's, it's very inspiring that, uh, that you have optimism. But for us to experience that feels very difficult. I think anyway, uh, quite, it is quite natural. More challenge uh, than that may provoke our mind. And then think, uh, now our usual sort of uh, s certain things we take for granted. Now, that may be something wrong. Then we human being, not I'm something special person, but every human being have the same potential. You see, if you think more seriously, uh, thinking more wider perspective and more investigation, then you get clearer picture about the reality. I think many cases uh, our activities or our sort of thinking uh, based on appearance. Appearance that sometimes Buddhists describe as illusion. So appearance, there is always gap, appearance and reality. So when things are okay, then uh, we usually should take the easier way just uh, on the basis of appearance. When things become more difficult, then we go to more investigate, thinking deeper way about the reality. So I think they, uh, now today, I think people uh, in the 20th century, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, sacrificed millions of human life and using, using nuclear weapon on human community. But what result? More suffering, more hatred more division. Uh, so then, they, uh, through violence, uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot eliminate entire community who disagree with you. Impossible. So we have to live with them. So the dialogue, non-violence, become now reality. More effective, dialogue, try to uh, find solution through talk. Uh, not concept of one side win, one side victory, one side sort of defeat. Not that way. So I think non-violence concept now becoming more and more as a day. I think reality. Uh, now here I have strong sort of feeling. I always telling my Indian friend, my gurus, uh, and also I want to share, uh, I want to tell uh, our interview through this interview to to appeal my Indian sort of brothers sisters ahimsa nonviolence and religious tolerance is not the modern product but century old Indian tradition now that old tradition now very much relevant to today's world. So now, time has come, my boss, Indian Guru, must take more active role, promotion of uh, Ahimsa, uh, promotion of religious harmony. I think world need that. It's not sort of uh, 
uh, it is not good. You see, you're just content. Uh, you have a long tradition and, and seeking something from outside. That's, I think, wrong tradition. Uh, I think, wrong. Yes, we need modern technology, uh, the modernity we need. But in the meantime, the sum of our traditional value now must be active. And not only keeping sense, the whole world becoming one entity, one, one entity. So to promote this uh, religious harmony and nonviolence. So that's, I think, the only way. No matter, now for example, Buddhism, even at the time of Buddha himself, or the, I think, the peak sort of city level, and Nalanda masters there, uh, they never try and they cannot uh, convert whole Indian to, <laughs> into Buddhist. That's reality. Similarly, Hindus or Muslim, you see, cannot convert rest of others. Impossible. We have to live together. So in ancient time, uh, each country or each uh, nation, you see, more or less remain isolated. Now that reality also completely changed. So therefore, now we must work together. All different sort of people of different tradition come, bring together, and work together, and the spirit of uh, spiritual brother sisters. Uh, here, India's religious tolerance is immense sort of what's today, uh, relevant and benefit. And then ahimsa, a lot of problem. There, so long we human beings remain there, so long human intelligence remain there, the power of visions remain there, disagreement, different views, different ideas, always there. Then, due to that, eliminate other impossible. We have to find, uh, on the basis of mutual sort of interest, mutual goal, that's better world, happier world, work together. And each individual, small, small interest, you can keep. But our common responsibility is better, better world, happier world, peaceful world. So, so therefore, India's century-old sort of tradition, ahimsa. I think Mahatma Gandhi, at that time, you see, he really made contribution. Now we need more active these modern facility. Now must utilize in order to in order to use for hatred or division or propaganda. I think use for what is it, the meaningful concept of human being, ahimsa, religious tolerance. So I really want to tell you and through you tell millions of Indian Guruji <laughs> now should be active. I'm just a messenger. Messenger will carry India's message wherever I go. Uh, till now I carry, just for my life I will carry. Now my boss must be active. It is not sufficient. Just a messenger go here and there and my boss remains like that. It is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> must be active. Your Holiness, as, 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 as a gesture uh, that you have provided uh, uh, amazing leadership, that you are visiting uh, places of worship of uh, seven or eight different traditions, including Gandhiji, uh, with a group of distinguished uh, Indian friends from different traditions mm -hmm. to actually grow and pray and perform the rituals of other traditions. Uh, and I think that this is a very uh, rare gesture from a, from, the, from a leader of any one tradition. Usually, uh, uh, people from different religions get together and say we should, there should be harmony and we should uh, be at peace and talk about religious harmony. But actually, to be able to celebrate diversity enough to go and practice those uh, traditions, uh, what has prompted this very emphatic gesture uh, on your part? I think since uh, mid, I think mid 70s, I think 75, 76, I started this practice at Sanat, one day uh, pilgrimage to different sort of uh, sacred sort of temples or gudwas of different tradition. Uh, then with same spirit, Jerusalem, some Muslim, some Christian, some Jews, 
I am as a Buddhist. Then later, one occasion, one Hindu is also there. Uh, and many Christian holy places in Europe, like Lohut and also Fatima in, 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 in Portugal. Uh, I practice with this in many parts of the world whenever I have the opportunity. So this, some, uh, not only just as a meeting and talk, uh, this is something you get some real sort of feeling. And one occasion, some, my Christian friend, as he came to, uh, as a result of my sort of visit to their place and give teaching uh, gospel, uh, at qu quite difficult, you see, I'm actually, uh, as they, strictly speaking, non-believer of God <laughs> or Creator. But I sincerely, you see, teaching them the existence of Creator, God. It was a wonderful book called Good Heart. <laughs> right, right, right. So difficult job. But in any way, you see, they, afterward, you see, uh, the audience, many of them, you see, really, you see, get sort of has a complete satisfaction. In any way, as a result, you see, their group come to India and Budhagaya, few days seminar, and each morning, the Christian brother sisters silent meditation under a Bodhi tree. This is such experience is immense sort of uh, benefit in spiritual level or mentally or emotionally. Now, not only you see they uh, showing friendship, but also you see they share some of deeper experience or vibration in these different holy places. So now I'm very very happy. You see they uh, have you see, this opportunity uh, uh, group with sort of representative or uh, practitioner of different tradition together go different uh, temples or or say the uh, sacred place uh, in Delhi as a uh, India's capital I feel uh, I feel this good start now I have a uh, strong feeling now we must carry this kind of work more active continuously and not only within the country but eventually the rest of the world must show our practice that's I, th I feel I feel very necessary if you'd like to sort of uh, send out a, a, a message a, a greeting uh, to the people of India uh, we're on Doordarshan it's a national public broadcaster uh, people are watching you uh, all over the country uh, on this uh, 50th anniversary. What would you say to them? Uh, so I want to take this opportunity to express my thank, appreciation to people of this country and government of this country and same time reflect last 50 years uh, how much uh, Indian people, Indian government is help us. I think Indian government take maximum care of us. Thank you. In the meantime, I also reflect last more than thousand years how much Indian masters such as Nagarjuna and of course Buddha himself and like Nagarjuna uh, Nagarjuna is my most favorite Indian master so I always consider his close sort of student maybe one of my previous life some connection some sort of direct connection with him maybe I don't know <laughs> but in any way while I'm thanking India uh, I can't stop reflection of thousand years uh, Indian masters sort of help to us to open our mind, open our uh, intelligence or in intellectuals. So thank you very much. Now India, I think the traditionally, the, I think almost the most spiritual sort of, or should they, or should they, very very strong spiritual tradition developed and also today generally speaking Indian masses uh, very much sort of religious minded or sometimes I have some critics Indian sort of 
the uh, faithful sort of religious minded people simply uh, recite some Sanskrit word without knowing the meaning and some offering flowers or fruit like that without much interest to study about philosophy, about this deeper meaning of spirituality. That uh, my constructive criticism. Please, you see, take more sort of, pay more attention to study meaning. Uh, uh, so I, wa I want to thank to you and now today's world I think India, not only in the economy field or technology field, India, I think from your traditional values or traditional sort of India sort of treasure, such as nonviolence, such as religious harmony, I think you have great potential to, com to contribute, uh, immense contribution for a better world, for a harmonious world. Thank you.